Welcome to the Solid Cam University channel. This video's topic is creating a uh, boring bar. Now, in this video, we're actually going to be specifically talking about this boring bar here, the Micro 100 BB 180 500 G. Uh, we've got a lot of requests for this particular boring bar. So, what we'll be doing is we will uh, take these dimensions as well as the dimensions from this catalog here, and we will be defining the tool. So for simplicity, I actually have all of that information collapsed into one Word document. All I really did was grabbed a couple of screen grabs from that catalog. So you can see the dimensional drawing there, the overhead there, and then just the specific dimensions for the 180. Uh, so I'm just going to put that off screen here, but that is basically what I'm referencing when I create this uh, this video. So and you can see here that I've actually created the uh, the boring bar already. There's just a couple of things going on here. You can see one, the green solid is actually an STL holder. So I actually defined that for the back end of the tool. Once again, we look at this, my D2 dimension, D2 being quarter of an inch, I created an STL holder that is simply just a cylinder and that is a quarter of an inch. So that represents the back end. But if we take a look at just the simple dimensional drawing here, I actually have created this as a solid tool solid internal turning tool. And with these dimensions here, taken from those dimensional drawings, I plug that in here. So let's take a look at what I've done here. So every one of these dimensions is pretty much true to the, the original dimensional drawing. Let's bring all that on screen and we can see what we've done here. So the only one of these that is not actually from the catalog is the A dimension, because the A dimension, I needed it to actually line up with the bottom of the uh, of that of that shank there. So the A dimension is the only thing I'm not holding true. I actually modified it so that it actually lines up nicely with the bottom of the part. Let's actually hide the holder for a second. So to get that to line up somewhat nicely, that's what I did there. But otherwise, my F dimension is that quarter of an inch. My E dimension is the distance from this edge here to the tip of the of the insert. So that's why it's a negative number, negative 70. And if we take a look at the value here, it gives us a distance of P, which I basically translated from, assuming that that line right there represents the center of the tool, I actually did the math. So F minus P gives me the distance of E. So I actually did all that math to get that kind of distance there. The D1, D2, those represent the lengths of the insert there. Um, I actually kind of cheated a little bit and made that um, basically this D1 dimension. D1 is 118. I actually kind of modified it so that it actually lined up kind of nicely there. So a lot of this is a little bit of modification just to get it to look correct. But if the exterior dimensions are correct, in this case, I've got my quarter inch here. I've got this nicely lining up there. This point is a certain distance away from there. This should line up correctly. Your D dimension is the same as the L2 on that drawing. The angles are listed here. Now, the only thing that's a little different about the angles is the two dimension, the two, uh, the degree, two degrees, I actually don't have that defined here. I actually have the inverse of that. So what I did was I took the six degrees from the horizontal, that's the beta dimension, or the small b. And the a is essentially 90 degrees minus b, and then we get the a. So 90 minus 6 minus 2 gives me the 82. So that's how I got that dimension. Uh, the corner radius, very simply, I just took it from the other catalog information. The fact that it has a 6 style radius. And again, the C dimension, um, I kind of uh, kind of uh, messed up that a little bit. Not messed up, but basically just kind of judged it by the same. So the D1, D2, and the C, I'm generally making them the same so they come out to kind of be like a square shape. So, uh, But the angles are correct. So again, really, you're looking for just the effective dimensions of this part. You're looking that you have a proper distance from the shank to the tip, the angles, so you have proper relief angle and everything lines up nicely. And then once we add 
the shank. Let's put that, that shank back on there. That should all line up. You can get your proper collision detection off that. You can get your proper uh, coding off that. This should allow you to reuse this tool as it is in real life. A lot of the a lot of the dimensions here, some of them are not really actually going to come into play. For instance, like I said, I had to change the A dimension, the thickness of this piece right here. But since this distance is correct, and we're not really looking to see if this is going to do anything, you can somewhat ignore that dimension. You can kind of, you're still doing collision detection against this edge here. You're still getting your proper distances from the back end of the shank. You can still model this up and use this in your turning toolpath. If you need any specific help with your unique parts or with this part in general, let's say, for instance, you are also trying to model up the, the B18500G, um, you can always give us a call at the main tech line at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. You can send us your catalog information, your uh, STL models, anything you need help with with creating some of these unique tools. You can send that to us either um, in, uh, in, our, uh, in your direct contact with us, we will give you an email that you can use directly to contact us, or you can submit a ticket using our ticket system at solidcansupport.com. Any other questions or anything else, you can always call us at those main numbers as well, or you can stay tuned for the rest of the videos on this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.